What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to graph a square root function that has an absolute value in it. And also how to find the domain and range, right? So whenever you graph a square root function, it's always the same steps, right? It doesn't matter if you have an absolute value in there or not, all right? So the first thing that we have to do here is take whatever is underneath the square root or whatever is underneath the radical. So let's take that. So that's the absolute value of x plus one, right? That's what's underneath the radical. And you're going to simply set that greater than or equal to zero, okay? Now here, we're trying to solve for x, right? So the next thing we can do is get rid of this positive one by subtracting one from both sides, right? These cancel out. And we're simply left with, I'll just write it over here, the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to zero minus one, which is negative one. Okay, so here, this is the final inequality that we get. And now we just need to figure out what numbers can we plug in to, for x right here that would make this inequality true or accurate. Well, in this case, we can plug in any number for x, right? Positive or negative, because when you take the absolute value of any number, it's always positive. And any positive number is always going to be bigger than or equal to negative one. Okay, great. So now that we know we can plug in any number for x here, let's make a little xy table so we can graph some points. All right, so let's say this is the table right here, the xy, or instead of y, we're using f of x, right? So let's plug in or write f of x right there. Now the x values that I'm going to pick right here, they're going to be a little intentional, all right? So here I'm going to pick negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3, all right? Notice there's a little symmetry going on here, right? I have a 3 and a negative 3, right? I have 1, negative 1, and then 0 is in the middle. You don't have to have any type of symmetry like that in your table, but it's normally helpful if you do, all right? Because it's going to help with the math a little bit. Okay, and notice I'm using negative numbers and positive numbers, right? Because here we can plug in both negative and positive. So I want to plug in both to see what both sides of the graph look like, okay? So now let's plug in our x values into this original function and see what pops out for f of x, All right, So here for this first one, we're going to get that f of x, right? We're going to say that f of x is equal to the square root of the absolute value of x, which for our first x, we're gonna plug in a negative three right there, and then we have plus one. The square, the, or the square root, <laughs> the absolute value of negative three is equal to positive three, right? So then this is equal to the square root of positive three plus one, uh, which is equal to the square root of four, which is equal to two. Okay, so when we plug in a negative three into our function, it poops out a positive two, all right? So that's what f of x is, right? Positive two. All right, now let's plug in a negative one and see what it poops out this time. So then here, we're gonna get that f of x is equal to the square root of the absolute value of x, which again is gonna be negative one this time, plus one, all right? So then this is gonna be equal to the square root of uh, the absolute value of negative one, that's just positive one, right? So we get one, plus one, which is equal to two. So here we get the square root of two, which if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get that this is equal to approximately 1.41. All right, so when we plug in a negative one, we get approximately 1.41. All right, and let's clean this up a little bit so it doesn't get too cluttered here. All right, now let's plug in a zero. So if we plug in a zero into our function, we're gonna get that f of x is equal to the square root of the absolute value of zero plus one. The absolute value of zero is just zero. So here we get the square root of zero plus one, which is equal to the square root of one, which is equal to simply one. All right, now let's plug in a positive one. And here, since we kind of kept our x value symmetrical, the whatever it spits out, it's gonna be basically symmetrical in this case, all right? So here, since we had a negative one, it pooped out 1.41. Here, we're gonna plug in a positive one, so it's gonna poop out 1.41 also, all right? And if you wanna prove that to yourselves, we could say that, again, this function is equal to the square root of the absolute value of positive one, right, plus one. So then this is equal to the square root 
of positive one plus one, which is equal to the square root of two, which again is equal to approximately 1.41, all right? Just working out that one problem just so you can see why this is convenient, all right? So that means for this last one, if we plug in a three, right, it would be the same thing as plugging in a negative three, so we know it's gonna poop out a two. Wow, this problem has a full tummy, it really has to go potty. So now the last thing that we have to do is simply graph it, all right? So first, our first coordinate is negative three, positive two, right? So negative three, positive two is right there. Then we have negative one, positive 1.41, right? Negative one, positive, that's a little under 1.5, right? So about there. And then we have zero one, which would be right there. And then it's gonna be symmetrical on the other side, right? So one, 1.41, and then three, two is right there. All right, so if you play the connect the dots, something like that, and something like that, all right? So it kind of looks like a, like one of those birds, right? Really cool birds, very artistic, or like, a, like an open book, all right? That's what these graphs are generally gonna look like if they have an absolute value inside of the radical, all right? So that's how you graph it. Now, lastly, let's take care of the domain and range. All right, so the domain, remember, are your x value limits. So here you can see that the x values go from negative infinity towards positive infinity, right? There's no constraint. This graph covers every x value that you could possibly think of. So we could write that as all real numbers or in interval notation, we can say that the domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and then lastly, the range. The range are our y value limits, right, up and down. So you can see that the lowest part on this graph is right here, right, at one. Or in other words, this is y is equal to one, right? That's the lowest part. And then the highest part, the graphs kind of look like they're going just straight to the sides a little bit, but really they're rising little by little, okay? So they're really rising kind of like in that direction, little by little, forever, and same thing, rising in that direction, little by little, right? So they're gonna go towards positive infinity forever. So the lowest point is a positive one, and we know we're including this positive one, right? So we're gonna put a bracket around that one, and it goes up towards positive infinity like this. So. so if you found the video helpful, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below.